Hello guys, welcome back to another podcast of the Jai Thakkar Show. Today we have a very very special person, uh, Mr. Vishwara Jadeja, who has uh, 65 national records and uh, also who is going to take part in Winter Olympics 2022. So let us all welcome Vishwara. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How yes. are you? Sir? I'm fine. Wait, the light is. I'm just going to make sure the lighting is not there. Uh... Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Fine. Yeah. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Lovely. Tell me. I'm so sorry. I just got a little bit uh, uh yeah, just occupied with things. It's just constantly there's uh, something or the other coming up. So Uh, uh so sir so, uh, first of all uh, introducing you mm-hmm. uh vishwara sir is uh, having 65 national records on his name uh, he has also uh, broken a world record on uh, highest 5 km uh, ice skating uh, and uh, sir most of all a very proud moment for indians that you are going to represent india in winter Poten- olympics uh, Pot- 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 potentially 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 representing yeah, the winter olympics because uh, the, the everything is finalized in the olympic year uh, which is you know, 2021 2022 uh, so even before that you can't claim that i'm going to represent uh, india at the olympics you have to say potentially okay this is potential yeah we all wish that you uh, take part and you bring Uh, India's first Winter Olympic medal. Right. Absolutely, that is that is the basic idea. Uh, we are giving it our hundred percent. It's it's uh, it's been a long journey so far. Ten ten years, twelve uh, years actually. To be honest with you, ten years. Uh, and yeah, it's a process. Uh, it's a long process. You have to uh, yeah repeat it, repeat repeat a lot of things you do. Uh, and ice skating, as you know. Uh, it's one of the most hardest sports out there and especially long track speed skating is uh, has been a part of the olympic charter since the inception of the olympics so in that sense uh, yeah it is one of those hard sports uh, and india has never had an entrance uh, had a participation in that particular situation so we'll make sure uh, that the best uh, outcome is achieved so sure, and uh, with all our uh, wish and prayers are with you Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so, yeah. sir, talking about uh, Winter Olympics. Mm. So, uh, how Winter Olympics is being pursued in India? Uh, because uh, as as a viewer, we know that it is not that famous uh, from the normal Olympics which we see. But from a player's perspective, uh, what you can share with us? I think it's uh, Winter Olympics. You know, it's a Nordic sport. first of all uh it's played by mostly the northern hemisphere countries uh and in india especially even the sports is popular in the mountain regions for example himachal pradesh uttarakhand ladakh jammu and kashmir uh so it is mainly uh it is a very popular sports when it comes to a winter sport is very popular when it comes to uh the mountains i mean the mountain regions and on top of that obviously we don't have any infrastructure which is at par with the global standards so we can't expect ki our you know we'll have uh, olympians produced in india uh, but because of that every athlete who's who is serious enough or who is motivated enough to pursue uh, the olympic journey or the olympic challenge have, has to move away uh, from india and prepare and train uh, with foreign coaches with places where it is possible which you know where, where there is access uh, given to them and i think uh, that is that is it and that is what it is and we keep on trying to make sure uh, those kind of things are uh, don't happen again so then you know for my journey what i have gone is i'm trying to get back and trying to figure out how these things don't happen again you know and obviously uh, this year i'd say i've received a lot of attention because of the medals at the uh, at the winter olympics masters uh but uh because of that now we are just trying to see how to capitalize on that and because of the pandemic obviously uh it becomes a bit difficult uh, because the issue of sports is not a priority during pandemic pandemic is the priority which is normal which is obvious uh so we cannot uh, question that at all uh 
uh, but in our capacity we are doing our best uh, to make sure we keep going uh, 100%, 100% sir and uh, talking about moving out uh, in terms of uh, olympic sports mm-hmm. so uh, i have i have heard somewhere that you have gone to europe for studying for engineering and mm-hmm. then from there uh, your prior motivation <coughs> Uh, ice skating yeah but you went there for engineering so what was that whole journey from engineering to uh, getting so, into ice uh, I, i have been an athlete all my life i'm 25 now from that i'd say 25 years of my life i have been an actively involved in sports uh, and serious sports uh, after i was 14 so but it's just, uh, then you know and i was roller skating all my life also uh, and where i've been uh, i went to the wind uh, what do you say the nationals uh, national gold indian team asian championships and then the world championship represented in india <clears throat> but then at some point uh, yes uh, roller skating did not make it to the winter olympic charter so then i had to do something uh, to make sure that i am able to represent my country at the olympics and after you give 10 years to a sport you want to make sure that happens uh, so moving to the ice was the obvious choice at the time um and obviously for indian people to move to europe or outside of india to any other country you need a visa and there was not, never up an athlete or an individual who had moved to europe particularly uh to pursue the sport so there was obviously no visa regulations or any of those things in place at the time so and plus i was studying at the and i'm like well maybe i'll do one of those things what most indian kids do is pursue engineering in 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 a foreign land and uh, the most financially feasible was denmark at the time uh because i could get a student loan in india and stuff like that and uh yeah basically that's what happened and uh, then eventually at some point it was no- very clear <coughs> that uh, i'm going to be able to pursue speed skating full time in the netherlands uh because of my coach who i met I and mean, we found each other and uh, yeah so then obviously it was uh, very obvious that i'm going to move to speed skating and move to Euro- move to the netherlands and uh, not finish engineering because the amount of money it was going to cost to pursue speed skating and the amount of money it was going to cost to pursue uh education was the same and i was going to let's say be a very very bad engineer to be honest I was pathetic uh and yeah so that's pretty much it uh talking about coach uh, sports is also a major uh, a major thing when it comes to coaching and Uh, so uh, you said you find your coach in Netherlands. So what was that whole journey of finding that perfect coach who understands you and uh, who uh, brings out full potential of yours? So I think uh, <clears throat> one of the main things I was very lucky that in India uh, I got an opportunity to train with one of the hardest coaches out there, uh, who is my father, uh, who is also a roller skating coach who's won like 600 national medals. Uh, for his academy and uh, you know stuff like that so i was very much used to a hard training program uh, so for me it was very clear that if i find a coach uh, the coach has to have a very heavy uh, what do you say a training program uh, only then uh, i will i mean yeah i will join them and uh, so then one one thing led to another and uh, at some point a journalist did a story about me in the biggest sorry i'm moving uh, in the biggest uh, skating magazine uh in 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 holland uh about the fact that there is an indian speed skater who wants to pursue uh the olympic goal or the olympic dream to to say the least uh is there a coach who wants to you know help out uh collaborate and stuff like that and there was obviously my coach vim he reached out amongst two other coaches but uh the vim has a history of uh producing olympic champions and world champions and the national champions in the past so i was like well that just makes it obvious that i'm going to join him and that was it in the first question he asked me said was like hey wish if you're crazy enough to come all the way from india to pursue my sport i'm crazy enough to coach you let's begin and we began and it's it's been like what uh 220 races 65 national records and recently the four medals uh uh for at the winter games masters which is the first for an indian athlete anyways so yeah this has been a very interesting journey i'm uh, getting goosebumps right from the boy experience so uh moving moving forward talking about the national records and uh, yeah 
he won medals at winter winter sports masters yeah so uh, what was it feeling before breaking that record when you were uh, listening the countdown before starting that race or before uh, uh, think that, that you, you, <coughs> yeah you have to understand um we've raced so many times now to manage this temperament and manage this emotion you know uh so for me it felt like any other race to be honest and uh it, you know the reason we do so many races is get used to the racing also uh and then the and because of that uh you just have to have that temperament before the race that okay i'm calm and composed and you know what come what me this is what i've been preparing preparing for and this is what is going to happen so i was pretty calm and composed obviously before the competition and the races started and uh, eventually afterwards i think the aftermath of it was pretty crazy i just could not believe it i was like oh this happened all right and especially later on when uh, india today did a big article with the whole page of my picture of speed skate i'm, I'm speed skating in that and uh, and like a big page art uh, you know write up uh, for me that was pretty pretty moving i was like oh wow that's uh, that's it that's it that's what's up yeah, you know so yeah so uh, when when you first heard that you broke a national record then what uh, what was it feeling about breaking uh, another 64 national records and how you controlled your uh, your temperament just before the race or do you do any particular practice for that or so we do a lot of visualization of competitions of racing over and over again uh so we don't get very nervous before the races uh and uh, yeah i think it is exciting every race is exciting every training session on the ice is exciting but we still uh, enjoy it way too much <laughs> i feel uh so i think that's uh, one of those things and uh yeah pretty much that's it uh and you i mean you know if you don't enjoy what you do and you don't love what you do it becomes like a, it becomes work and i don't feel like i'm working it's just i'm enjoying every day it is struggle don't you know don't get me wrong everything uh which could have gone wrong has gone wrong two times and we still are here right? we still are trying and we still are trying to be better at what we do and uh yeah that's what's up uh one one another fascinating story which i have heard of yours is that you were rejected by 111 companies 17 uh, in terms of wow right. and 17 companies in terms of sponsorship and uh, then from there to getting the stage where you are so yeah. what was that story of rejection and then gaining <clears throat> i think as uh, as a winter athlete i realized that uh you know when i began my i was in, i was told very clearly that uh there is going to be way too much i mean who wants to know about the indian ice skater preparing for the olympics nobody cares to be honest you know uh nobody really cares and that's something you have to digest and accept early on only then you you're embracing your situation and then you're like well ab aa jao you know that is the basic idea and i was very clear on that ki yaar rejection to hone wala hai chalo let's see how much uh how how far can this go and uh, over the years <coughs> you just get used to it at some point and uh, you like well let's see what happens the next time and you try to make sure that uh, you do your best in each and every presentation you make and uh, yeah so and then that's it so wow great because uh, uh what one 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 message which i have seen from you is that uh, because many people face rejection and then they just stop it because they are like uh, okay now i'm getting rejected and things are going beyond my control so i'm going to stop it so what well, was that constant motivation of yours that that led you to handle 117 rejection and then gain your first successful sponsorship uh i think still i have not received a completely uh, full sponsorship also uh, but at the same time uh it is still fun as to how one of the initial sponsors was also the gujarat government so i was able to convince the government bodies to uh convince them as to like hey this is a real thing from 
and uh, this is the real deal and this is what can be possible and this is what we are doing and you know <clears throat> so all of those things and i'm just like well if we can do that and when that happened then i was like yeah well if, if the government bodies agree uh, and agrees to what we do i think that is enough uh, clarification and enough gratific i mean enough uh, confirmation that hey this is we're on to something uh and giving up has now never been a choice and and either an option uh so i was very clear on that uh yeah so that's something which uh, which which i'm very proud of uh and rejection is rejection you know it's just like luckily because i'm an athlete i deal with uh, rejection better than everybody else probably because you know we know how to lose so before you win you need to lo- learn how to lose uh and only then you know you can be proper yeah that's something yeah so super super and uh, what was that transition between roller skating roller skating to ice skating and uh, being successful in both careers as well because roller skating roller skating is where, where you reach uh, representing as captain of captain india Vice cap, vice cap, vice cap, vice cap. So from there, uh, getting uh, valuable success in roller sport, roller skating to uh, shifting to ice skating. So what was that run? Uh, I think uh, initially I thought it was going to be easy, but it isn't. Uh, it's a completely different sport. Uh, ice skating is a completely different animal. Uh, you have to understand roller skating. I did for what 12, 13 years to get to where I was, and uh, so ice skating. You have to give at least that much time uh, to be at least be at par. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that's what you have to do. And you know, uh, an average uh, European athlete has twice that time to prepare. So they start skating at six, seven, eight, uh, and then till twenty, they are just preparing and getting better. And then the next ten years, they are just performing at the highest level of the sport. So for me, I have those ten years, and then now five years to just perform as best as I possibly can, and that's it. So my I have compressed twenty, thirty years of training into ten, you fifteen, know, uh, which is yeah, which is quite a quite a challenge, and uh, which I feel I mean you know I I I could easily say like yeah, no, I don't want to do that. You know, I can't do this, that, and other. No, come on, that's the end of uh, you know that is the end. That you might as well not start. So for me. If I cannot uh, compete with the best in the world, if I'm not able to, uh, let's say, pursue what I want to do with some of the best in the world, uh, then there's no point in uh, pursuing this. And obviously, how how long can we, sh- uh, you know, celebrate mediocrity as an Indian athlete? So, so you have to make sure that Asian Games, we did Asian Games to 2017, <coughs> participated in all distances, uh, and you know, so and still standing. uh so, so i'm i'm guessing like you know that's where i gained a lot of respect from a lot of my peers even in the asian scene uh so i was like well all right let's let's keep going and let's keep doing what we do so so what would be your uh, main advice i mean for for students who are pursuing olympics in terms of getting sponsorships mm, yeah that's a tough one man that's a very tough one because i'm still figuring it out uh sponsorship is something which uh which i mean people say that you get you first have to perform on the ice or perform on your at sports and then you will get sponsorship but that is not a confirmation that is never a, a guarantee but good, being a good performer adds a lot of value <clears throat> and uh, if you and, and again depends on what kind of businesses you are you are pitching it to and uh and, you know so stuff like that is just i think uh if you are skate if you are doing a sport your sport and pursuing the olympics for a sponsorship then that's the wrong place to start maybe if you're doing the sport and then if the sponsorship comes i think that is should be a bonus i'd say <clears throat> because it is a tough sport it is a tough place to be space to be in and uh uh yeah i mean you can't compare any two sports uh, to be honest you cannot compare winter sports to summer sports you cannot compare ice skating to roller skating you cannot compare cricket to soccer so in those in those that perspective it is never going to be easy uh so yeah i mean just keep doing what you do uh and, and to find sponsors i think you just have to keep on trying new ways find innovative ways of how you are able to communicate what you do on and off the field you know <clears throat> as best as possible and uh, maybe you'll be able to convince one someday someone and that's it and you have to repeat that over and over and over again 
otherwise it's never gonna you know you will you can i mean if you say like first five you pitch and then like yaar ab to nahi ho raha hai to par nahi hone wala hai kaise hoga you know so you have to also if you see my pitch from uh five years ago to now it has it is over very different it is very very different and it works very differently so i think yeah so that is one of those basic ideas which i feel that uh, young athletes should make sure that they put their heart and soul into what they are doing and it will reflect directly in their work easy and uh, yeah and yeah just i mean it's it's either you if you are spons- running for after sponsorship uh it's never going to work out like that because you'll end up spending so much time and energy on that you forget to train and you forget to do all of that and all of that will suffer and you don't want to do that Does that answer the question? Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. And uh, another another important thing for sports uh, overall in general is uh, management of finances. Not only in terms of sponsorship, but uh, in general as well, you have to manage your finances so that you can train yourself to full potential. But then also you are financially well be enough that you can live your live your normal life as well. So how to find that proper balance? I, I I call it optimization of resources, not the finance, because finances is a means to, you know, do something. Money is there so that you can do things. <clears throat> so for me, it was very clear that I need to optimize the resources as to how do you manage all of those things. Then uh, I think uh, that is something which you have to cap. I mean, you know, learn on, along the way. There is no guidebook to it because everybody's training program is different. Everybody's struggle is different. Uh, to give you a small example, if I mean prioritizing. Prioritizing. If I get a hundred rupees, how do I use that hundred rupees? What is my priority? I'll give you a very clear example. I'll give a very clear uh, insight into what and how you're doing things. So, I just make a list of ten things uh, on the scale of importance, one to ten, and that's it. And 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 then I go from there and see if I get a hundred rupees, then I spend twenty rupees on this, twenty rupees on these, ten rupees on this, ten rupees on this, and that that way I just kind of like break down everything in the smallest particular uh, way fashion. uh denominator and then from there i make it build the blocks up again so it's like every drop fills up the ocean uh and yeah so that is the basic idea i basically breaking down everything <clears throat> knowing what goes where and how much you need and what you need and where you want to go so yeah you will, now, i mean if if you're a struggling at if you're a struggling athlete you'll become a very good you will become very good at finances for sure So uh, coming to uh, fitness part of it, where uh, fitness in general is now taking a revolutionary turn in India, where uh, sports person like you, Virat Kohli, are bringing the fitness uh, uh, fitness era in India. So in in general, if you want to tell what exactly a fit person is, then uh, what would be your definition of fitness? I'm very happy, or very. I am. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. So it's very heartwarming that you say you and Virat Kohli are bringing fitness to India. <laughs> like, oh wow! Or, oh, oh, right. We are. We are. Let's go run a marathon. See who who can finish. But uh, let's say. Uh, but again, uh, and that's my point also. Like, there, there has to be a clear, clear uh, indication on what the difference between sports and a game is. That's two very different things. Cricket cannot be a sport; it is a game. Uh, cycling is a sport; it cannot be a game. To be giving you the basic example. Uh, having said that, both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, both of them have their pros and cons, and you need to be fit for both. Basically, different levels of fitness, but you need to be still be fit for both. Uh, so I think, uh, <clears throat> yeah, fitness for me is very different because uh, I end up cycling ten thousand kilometers a year just just as a part of cross training. you know uh, and, and then you i also end up but that is just a part of cross training which is a small part of the day and then we do a lot of dry land training a lot of plyometric simulation and visualization towards the goal so i think a basic fit person i mean basic fit person as an offer a normal human being if they are able to train one hour two hours a day is more than enough but then to be able to do that over a long period of time <clears throat> i think that's where it, it is the difference there is the difference there <clears throat> and and uh, talking about uh, the, the rough part or the where where you were medically uh, unfit for a few period of time. 
so mm-hmm. so what was your mentality in those in that recovery phase that you you were able to jump fast and uh, bounce i i i think injuries are a very uh, common phenomenon for athletes who are trying to push the limits so the thing is the only way, way you can develop as an athlete is if you are pushing yourself and <clears throat> if you're not pushing yourself you will not be that athlete you know a top that top athlete and if you push yourself there will be point t- times when you will go with, over the board and that means you get injured so it is like a chicken and an egg story you cannot push karna hai kitna nahi karna hai and that is a fine line which is very hard to find and i still face that problem and uh, and when you're injured i think you have to focus on the positives of the whole situation instead of the negatives because once the negatives creep in there's no going back <laughs> so i i try to make sure that there is no negativity coming in creeping in i just make sure on the focus on the positives and then that's it <clears throat> uh and so whenever i'm injured or i'm having having down time i only focus on uh imagining that i'm on the ice pack and i'm going back. and i focus on the positives that's it if you focus on the negatives Hundred percent, hundred percent. And uh, talking about the growth of sports in our country, where people are uh, slowly, slowly trying to go for uh, uh, adapting sports, and not only cricket. People are now going at different sports and pursuing them. Cricket, cricket is a game. Cricket is a game. Cricket is a game. Sorry. So, uh, different Just sports in terms of cycling, ice skating. and yeah. different kind of sports yeah so as an athlete how do you see india 10 years later in terms of uh, olympic athletes in terms of uh, more and more sports i think we have not even scraped the top of what is potentially possible in india even in, in terms of sports forget winter athlete or summer athlete no we have not even scraped the you know top of what is possible underground you know so it is a good beginning obviously i'd say india was doing better at the olympics in the 1950s and the 40s when uh, you know we went on to win the olympic gold with hockey you know so <clears throat> i'd say we had that past if that is that is our past how can this be our present <laughs> you know how can we this be our present when we had no resources we're still winning medals and now we have resources in unlimited resources as sports in india and we still are struggling how is that possible you tell me you know so i think the potential is uh definitely infinite uh, we can definitely be a sports powerhouse uh, for that obviously all the stakeholders have to come together which is going to be the challenge i think finding motivated athletes is not a problem but uh, finding institutions organizations uh, administration administrative bodies uh, uh, you know people involved with all the governing bodies they all need to have all everybody needs to have a aligned goal which is the development of the sport and success of their particular sports uh, and i think then we'll be there but when you say 10 years i don't think 10 years is enough it's going to be at least one whole generation uh, before uh, we are able to you know call ourselves uh, a sporting powerhouse somewhere or winter it'll be a whole generation so not in your or my life it will be one more life life cycle so maybe your kids and my kids probably maybe that also maybe i'm not sure <laughs> uh yeah i'm not even sure if that is it i mean i i see things on the ground almost every week so yeah. uh, uh so uh, there is a beautiful a uh, beautiful question here that uh, which training is more difficult mental mental training or physical training mental training always mental training physical training you can pick up a stone from point a to point b but if you're not convinced that i can pick up that stone how are you going to pick that stone up so i think it is always i think your way of training <coughs> pushing your limits so i remember initially i could not uh, i had to get used to the cold uh so the one thing i did was i started delivering newspapers in december so december in scandinavia is like snowing raining windy cold 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 it's just like everything is cold you can't even imagine. you will feel cold at places you never imagine you could feel cold at uh so, so so you know so that uh, that was one of the ways getting over my fear so i could not swim properly so i would go to the swimming pool and jump from the highest board over and over again 10 times just look down and sh- sh- shit your pants you know like no i have to get over my fears and uh yeah so i just jump down bam again 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 so i think 
uh, I'm very hardcore in that sense to uh, get over my fears and uh, do mental prep. <coughs> but uh, which is not everybody's cup of tea, obviously. But I think we all have to find those little things which make which fear which which we are f- fearful of or afraid of, uh, and just try to face it head on. Uh, and that doesn't happen overnight. Again, that is a process of a, a longer pro- process which you have to get used to and accept the fact that you will take a long time to get over your mental blocks. Correct. And and one more thing which uh, which I want to add and have learned from Kuntal Joshan sir who was previously here on my podcast. Yeah. Uh, he said that if you want to push your mental limits, start pushing your physical. physical limits like if if you can run 5 kilometers uh fix one day that you are you are going to run 5.1 kilometers next day 5.2 another day 5.3 and slowly you will start developing that mental confidence and uh, uh mental potential to achieve some yeah but but how do you decide that you can do 5 kilometers in the first place Uh, 5 kilometers. You know that you are doing 5 kilometers every day, so you have to push your limits from so 5 to 5.1 and 5.2. Okay. Okay. Lovely. No, he's right. He's right in that sense. You have to do small changes, one inch, one inch. So every time I have a personal best, I say millimeter gain. So it's all about in those millimeters. Every millimeter gained is a millimeter gone. So you know. So yeah, basically that's that's it. All it's all about those little inches or all those little millimeters. That's it. Hundred percent, and and uh, uh, coming to your own growth and uh, compressing those twenty-four years into twelve years. So, uh, how that intense training has changed you in terms of person? Uh, fundamentally, I'm still the same person, but uh, I'd say you you know you you learn a lot about yourself about how far you can push yourself, how long is your Uh, is your mental ceiling of how 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 much pain you can handle i think that is something which i have realized and i learn every day that it's more and more and more and uh, uh that's something which i am very proud of and obviously it's it's just you know you learn too much so much about yourself and you try to improve that basically that is the idea uh <clears throat> it is intense journey it is a very intense journey for you and everybody around you uh so you have to be prepared for that uh you need a good support system around you be it in coaching or be it family or friends you know uh because your social life is completely gone you know so it's just it is intense i would say and you just have to embrace it and take it as it comes otherwise you will get tired very fast and uh, which is something which i initially thought i can do it but eventually you find out it's really difficult uh, especially with injuries you know uh <clears throat> injuries are one of those type which, which is i think mentally taxing are the most is the injury time because then it's down time you are at home laying on the floor at times uh because your back is hurting so you can't walk uh sometimes i remember coming home from training and just laying on the floor and not being able to move uh so those kind of things you know it's just one of those things which you just have to learn to uh get over and keep pushing yourself and that is also the whole mental training aspect of it also like how how bad do you want it if you want want it bad enough you'll find a way to get it done Hundred percent, and 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 uh, talking about the uh, men, mental part, which is said that you you need to know how bad do you want. Uh, what one thing that I have seen in many people is that they they are just uh, focused on the uh, that what we say glorified outcome of the work which they are doing. For example, like you said that uh, if you are focusing on sponsorship, you are not going to get it that. Uh, rather than focusing on your sports and improving your sports, mm. so uh, the same thing which I have learned from uh, my mentor Abhiji Pradhan is that before doing anything, you need to clarify your why, mm. and yes, your basically. why should always be greater than uh, like I want to earn money or I want to earn sponsorship. It should mm. be more than that because you are doing the work which has its out, which has out, which is beyond money fame and yeah uh yeah basically i mean i i i would say if you know your why then you will find a you will figure out your how and then it will become any how towards your why and uh, that's it and uh, uh yeah so basically that and just 
I guess that, 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 that I, I keep it very simple. I don't make, no, I don't want to make it very complicated. Uh, if the end goal for me is representing India at the Winter Olympics, uh, then I'll figure out ways uh, to figure out how to get there. Uh, which means if I have to look for 200 different companies, knock on the doors of 200 different companies, I'll do that. It doesn't matter. If I have to jump from a from a sea link, I mean from a, from a bridge with the India flag, I'll do that. If there's somebody who's going to sponsor that, and that can enable me to pursue my speed skating, you know, it's fine. But exactly, so so that is again that is me talking from my own <coughs> motivations and my own way of doing things. Uh, which yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, if you have your why, it's very right to that. So if you have your why, then you figure out anyhow, like and how bad you want that why. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, what 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 exactly when you see yourself after fifty, where medically we say that uh, we are not not. Uh, fit enough to go for Olympics. So what, when you see yourself after 50 years of age? I think uh, uh, the question you asked was, uh, yeah, 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 I mean, the question is very interesting because uh, last Olympics, uh, one of the women athletes uh, from Germany was 45 and she was doing the longest distance of the, for the women and she won a medal also. So I think uh, whatever the medical experts have to say, the brain is a more stronger tool. So uh, I don't know. As you said, after 50, who knows? I, I just know for what I'm going to do for the next four years. Uh, and that's it. So I think I take four years at a time because four years is the Olympic cycle. And uh, that's it. And then every four years we figure out what has to be done next. So <clears throat> her name is Claudia Peckstein. If you want to Google her, you can Google her. She's from Germany and she still is faster than uh, the young, young uh, skaters in her country. Uh, so yeah, she's the fastest speed skater for that distance in her country. So that's some, something. And she's over 40, so 45, 46. I don't know something like that. So it's crazy. And uh, so then I'm just like, well, Martina Navratilova was 51 or something like that when they won with Leander Pace in a. Uh, at Wimbledon in the mixed doubles, so I think that's something which also has to be kept, you yeah. know, understood. So I think it's just, I think it is again, at the end of the day, it's all mental, uh, how, how badly you want what you want uh, and how, how willing are you to go after your goals. 100%, 100%. So, uh, coming to an end of this Age is podcast, just a number. Uh, Age is just a number, that's for sure. And uh, coming to the end, what would be your final message to all the people who are uh, thinking to pursue Olympics and music? I think just strive to be a better human being the next day than you were yesterday. Everything else will follow. Just try to keep it simple. Life is difficult as it is. Don't make it too complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I mean, I'm, yeah, exactly. So it's just, there's no point in making things complicated. So, uh, how was this podcast? Yeah, good, good, good. I like the I like the flow and the energy and the calmness of it. I like the way you are. You per- first of all, I think I, I, I really uh, applause your <coughs> patience with me because I've been uh, really distracted in that sense. I obviously the thing is there have been uh, not not to brag, but there's been so many things happening in the last recently uh, that I have to choose what kind of I mean. Uh, if I want to do something, it's not about what kind of, it's just basically finding this one hour, two hour in the schedule. <clears throat> and if I'm doing this, that means I'm not doing those 10 other things which have to be done. And because of the pandemic, everything has become very urgent, you know, to be able to find sponsors, support this, that, and other, and plus keep training. So <clears throat> then it's just like, do I want to do a podcast right now? You know, in that sense. So then I figured out like Friday, one hour, whoever wants to do a podcast, call me, we go. Doesn't matter how big, small you are. That's what I've done now. Like I've scheduled three, day, three weeks now, Friday, one hour. Wow. Yeah, which because because I I understand that I have to get the story out there and people have questions which I love to answer and questions are something which is good instead of just making assumptions. It's fantastic. I applaud your patience for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on this podcast and all the very best that you Thank you. Selected in Olympic and you bring first Winter Olympic medal for India in 2022. Thank you so much for your uh, support and acknowledgement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.
。